Today we're finishing up chapter seven and in this last subsection we are going to be solving some word problems that use different natural logs and exponentials. So the first thing that we should know is what the general format is for these equations. It's very similar to the one that we did with regular logs when we were talking about growth and decay, but now we would want to take into account that it's a natural log. So for exponential growth, the general format is y equals a e to the kt power. A is always your initial amount, what you're starting with. E is Euler's number. Please don't think that that is a variable. That's a common mistake I see. That is a, your irrational constant, and there's a button on your calculator for that. K is referring to your rate of continuous growth. So this is going to be your percentage as a decimal. And then T is your time. The exponential decay model is exactly the same, except the k value is negative since your numbers are decreasing over time. And then one more equation that might come up is if we're talking about exponential growth, but specific to interest. So if you have continuously compounded interest, The equation is the same except the variables change. So it's the same format but with different letters just to reflect that it's specific to interest. So your equation is A equals P E to the R T. P is your principal, which is your starting amount. So that's like your A value in the other equation. E is still Euler's number. R is your interest rate, which is your percentage as a decimal. And T is your time. And when we're talking about interest, we are talking about always in years. So you might want to have that equation. I can't remember if I assign any problems that are specific to that, but we would want to know that one for some financial calculations. So we're going to go through a few different word problems where we do different applications and the solving for each of them, which can be a little bit tough. So in this first example, we are talking about the half-life of carbon-14. Half-lives are really interesting. They're used in science to help you date different things to see how old substances are. So how you can do this is you can look at how much carbon is left in a sample and you can work backwards to figure out how old it is with the knowledge of how long it takes for half of it to break down. That's where the half-life comes from. So we are told that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. And the first thing that we are going to want to find is our K value. Which in this case, we would be talking about our rate of continuous decay since we're talking about a half-life and losing a substance over time. So the equation that we would wanna be working with was that decay model, so Y equals A E to the negative KT. Now we want to solve for k, which means that we should know our y value, our a value, and our t value. But they only give us one thing. They only tell us 5,730 years. That's obviously your t. So where do we get the y and the a from? That comes from the fact that we are talking about a half-life. So if a represents your initial amount, what you're left with, which is y after so many years, needs to be half of that. So we can change y into 0.5a because that's half of the amount that you started with. The e is always in your equation because that's your ruler's number. We don't know what k is, and our t is 5,730. Then from here, we want to solve for k. Now you have an A on the left-hand side and right-hand side, 
So like if you were trying to isolate your E and you divided by A on the right and A on the left, those A's are gonna go away on both sides. So I'm just gonna toss them right at the beginning. So we're just left with 0 0.5 equals E to the negative K, five, seven, three, zero. Which actually, why don't we go ahead and just write that a little bit nicer too. You can move that 5730 to belong to the negative. The order doesn't matter since it's multiplication. That looks nicer. At this point, this is like the problems that we solved on Monday. So how do you get rid of the E? You would need to take the natural log of both sides. Now on the right hand side, the LN and the E would cancel out, leaving you with negative 5730K. And on the left-hand side, we would still just have the natural log of 0.5, which I'm going to wait to type in until I then divide the negative 5,730 to both sides. So you should type all of this in your calculator at once to keep it the most accurate. So for your K value, you should be getting that it is 0 0.00012. And so then if you wanted to put it back into an equation, which we're going to want to use for the next part of the problem, your equation would be y equals ae to the negative 0.00012t. And then that's just our general equation that we can use to answer follow-up questions. So that's our k value there, though. Okay, so then if we want to answer some follow-up questions, let's say, for example, that a paleontologist finds the bones of an animal and they see that there is about 2% as much carbon-14 as it would have had when the animal was alive. And we want to figure out how long ago did the animal live. So this is real, a real calculation that scientists would use. So if you find a bone, you can see how much carbon is left in it and then use that to figure out how old those bones are. So to do this, we would want to use our little equation that we came up with before. Now we know some good information. We know that there is 2% of the sample left and we wanna know how long ago it lived. So now we're gonna be solving for T. If we're solving for T, that means that we must know what our Y and our A is. This is similar to before. We should know that if you have a certain amount, we're saying after so long, you were left with 2% of it, which is the same thing as 0 0.02 times the initial amount. And then we would have A to the negative 0.00012T. Just like before, your A's are gonna cancel out since there's one on each side. And then after that, how do you get rid of the E? You take the natural log of both sides. So that would leave us with ln of 0 0.02 equals negative 0.00012t. You would need to divide that number to the other side to get rid of it. And I would again, always try to wait until you kind of have everything isolated with a variable to type this part in your calculator, only because if you do it sooner, your answers will be a little bit off because you'll be rounding things sooner than the last step. So then in this case, you should end up getting that T is equal to 32,600. And of course, we're talking about years in that case. So that animal would have lived 32,600 years ago. We can answer other follow-up questions like how much remains after a certain amount of time. Um, and in that case, we would want to just be plugging something in for our T. Uh, which that one's pretty easy. I'm not gonna necessarily go through one of those examples. But uh, the main takeaway is write your equation, find your K value, use it to answer follow-up questions, just thinking about where would you plug in your different numbers that you're given. 
we are going to go through just one more example from start to finish. So in this one, we're going to write the equation from scratch pretty much. So in 2012, the population of the state of Texas was 26.06 million. And then in year 2000, we have the population as 20.85 million. The first thing we want to do is find the value of K. In this case, if we're thinking about if we should use the growth or decay model, this one would be growth because you in 2000, which is the earlier year, you had less people than in 2012, which was the later year. So your population has grown. So that lets me know I'm using the Y equals AE to the positive KT. Now plugging some stuff in, my initial amount would be the earlier year. So the 20.85 is my A value. And then uh, from there, I'm gonna have to use some logic to figure out the other numbers. So I have the E, I don't know what K is cause that's what I'm gonna be solving for, but I still need to know my Y and my T. Your Y is your amount after so much time has passed. So that's going to be the 26.06. But then when you think about what your T value is, how many years passed in between 2000 and 2012, that T value would be 12. Because 2012 minus 2000 is 12 years. Then from here, I can solve for my K value. So the first thing I would want to do is isolate my E. So I would start by dividing 20.85. And again, I'm honestly just gonna leave that in this little division format until all the way at the end. And then I would have to take the natural log of both sides. Then the E and the LN would cancel out. So I'm left with the natural log of 26.06 divided by 20.85 is equal to 12k. So then I would need to divide both sides by 12. Now this is the point where I would type this in my calculator. So I would type this whole thing right here in my calculator and I would make sure to put the parentheses that are in the numerator and you should get your k value as 0 0.01859 which if you're thinking about that, like if they ask you it more in an application to the problem, that means your population is growing at like 1.859% over the course of time. Now we can answer some follow-up questions because now we would have our equation. So our main equation is y equals ae to the 0 0.018. 859t. Okay, so for our first follow up question, let's see when will the population reach 30 million? Okay, so if you're thinking about where would you plug in the 30 million, that should be in for the y value because you're saying after so much time, your y is going to be 30 million, which we would just be putting 30 in our equation because we're not really including the million part of it. And then the starting population is still what we started with in 2000. So it's still going to be the 20.85. So actually, I guess I could write that in my equation up here. That's going to always be the 20.85. E to the 0.01859t. Then you need to solve. Same thing as before, you would work on isolating T using the same steps that I did in number one. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can get T solved on your own and then unpause it and see if you get the same thing as me. For me, I'm getting that T should be equal to about 19.57 years. Now, to actually write the answer the proper way, because the question was, when will the population reach 30 million? The answer of like 20 doesn't make sense. You would want to think about what year that is. 
So since our initial year was 2000 and we add the 19.57 and then we want to round that to a whole number since we're talking about years and we don't have like year 2020.5, uh, USA 2020 is when our population should reach that number, that 30 million number. And then we're gonna do one last example. Now this one's gonna be the hardest one. I'm gonna clear the screen for this. This is an important one to watch. We are now told that in 2000, New York's population can be modeled by an equation that's Y equals 18.98 E to the 0.002568 T. Uh, obviously, that's a growth model because it's a positive K value. We want to know when will New York's population surpass Texas's population. So this would be an inequality since we're talking about surpassing. So we're saying that the New York is above the Texas. So the New York equation was your 18.98 E to 0.002568 T. And we're saying that it's gonna be greater than Texas's equation, which Texas's equation was the 20.85, which was your population in 2000 e to the 0.001859t. That was the k value that we calculated in the first step of this problem. Now we need to solve this problem. This one is tricky. The first thing that you would want to do is take the ln of both sides because you do have an e that you're going to want to get rid of. However, when you do this, this utilizes your product property because right now this is like 18.98 times the E. So you would break that up using addition. So when we simplify this, it would actually be the natural log of 18.98 plus the natural log of E to that exponent. Same thing on the right, natural log of 20.85 plus natural log of e to that exponent. So you can't just straight away get rid of the e's, you would wanna break it up first, then you can actually cancel out your ln of e's. So then at this point, we're at ln of 18.98 plus 0.00258t is greater than ln of 20.85 plus 0.001859t. Now it's just a matter of solving for t. So you would want to get all of your t's to one side of the equation. So I would probably take, well, let's see which one I want to move around. I probably want to move Actually, I think I have an extra zero somewhere. Hold on one second. In our equation, we need to get rid of one of these zeros. There we go. Because decimals are so long, it's really easy to make a mistake writing them down. So I probably start by subtracting this to the other side. And then I would also subtract this ln to the other side to get rid of this. I'm doing two things at once. Okay. On the left hand side, I would get negative 0.016022t is greater than the thing on the right subtracted, which I'm not going to do quite yet. And then I would just need to divide by that coefficient. So in this case, if I'm typing this in my calculator, I will want to make sure I put parentheses around the numerator so it doesn't mess up order of operations. Our t should be greater, or sorry, less than, because we divided by a negative number. Let's go ahead and flip that inequality symbol. t should be less than negative 5.8t. 
six, five. Now, because we're getting the time as being negative, that doesn't make any sense. So what that lets us know is that New York's population will not surpass Texas's in the future. At least according to this equation. So on your word problems, make sure to read very carefully what they're asking you for. Make sure to give answers that make sense for the question that you're answering. So again, like if you figure out how many years since something has happened, you usually add that on to when it started. And then just think about how you would interpret your answers. Make sure to email me if you have any questions.